things. Today it's time for chapter number three of the book Database Internals. We're gonna learn how computers encode information in the first place, how the databases store uh, the data in the files, and how we can store a B tree in a file efficiently. Let's go! First of all, humans can interact and uh, communicate the numbers in a natural language. We just tell a number 13 or it's like 1730 o'clock. However, the computers are not able to do so. What they operate with are voltage. When you have a single of one or, or less voltage, it's, it means zero. And, and when you have a voltage of five, it means one. So basically computers only operate with zeros and ones. If so, how can they actually encode the numbers? Well, there's a simple tool for that. There are different calculation systems. Our own is based on 10. So we have 10 fingers and we're counting from one to 10 and then the next 10 numbers and so on and so on. However, the computers use binary calculations, so they have only zero and one. They, they count like this. There's a zero, then it's one, and then it's one zero. Uh, for us, it's two, but the, for the computers, it's two digits. It's one and zero. Then we add another one, so it's one, one. For us, it means three. For the computer, it means one, one. The same happens with the bigger and bigger numbers. So, for example, in order to encode the number 13, we need to have four zeros, two ones, another zero, and another one. So, in the computer's memory, it will be encoded with this sequence of zeros and ones, and for us it will be reinterpreted as 13. If we take a closer look on how a computer in particular stores these values, then we will see that uh, we have a bit index here, then we have a bit value, and like the final value. So when you uh, start to sum up those uh, bit values, you will come up with some number. So here for this uh, 13 example, you can see that the first bit is set to 1, the second bit is set to 0, the third and the fourth are set to 1. Uh, if you try to make the power of this thing with a 0 power of 2, you got 1. Then for the third bit, you have the second power of 2, with, uh, which translates to 4, and then you have the uh, third power of 2, which translates to 8. Then you sum up 8 four and one and you get 13. This is the way how computers encode the numbers. However, numbers are just simply not sufficient because we want to operate with floating numbers, we want to operate with strings, text, images and many more. In general, we can say that we want to operate complex structures. In order to describe a very simple complex structure like a string, we can come up with the following structure. Here, if we want to encode the string, then we need to first of all know the size of the string and then have the content of the string itself. So here on the image, you can see how it gets encoded. So we have the first byte, which tells us that the size of the whole string is eight bytes. And then we have different bytes listed in each cell. So basically for every type of information that we encounter, the computer has a way to encode it with bits and bytes. But we don't work with, you know, separate strings or bytes. What we usually do work with and database as well are files. So in order to store our valuable information, the databases need to write them to files. What is the internal structure of the file? So in typical database, the file looks like this. It consists of several important parts. The first part is fixed size header. So it depicts the version of the file, the database it belongs to, and some additional information. This header always have the fixed size, so the database knows uh, how many bytes it should read from the file in order to read it correctly. At the end of the file, we have fixed size trailer. So this thing indicates that the file is over and provides some additional information like checksums. In between of those headers and files, we have pages. So pages actually consist our important information, basically what user wants to write to the database. Okay, now we know the structure of the file itself and we figured out there are pages inside. How does a separate page look like? Here you can see the fixed size page layout. 
As you might remember, in B3 we were operating with keys, values and pointers to other pages. Here in the fixed size page layout you can see all of them. What does this fixed page size mean? It means that there is no variable data size at all. So we know in advance the size of every item. Here you can see that we have a key with index 0, uh, a pointer with index 0, a value with index 0, and so on. And we have um, and we have n of each of those. Here there are no problems. As you know, the size of each element, you can write them sequentially, you can read them sequentially, you can seek to a particular place in the file and read a particular value. For example, if we want to read the key with number n, we just multiply n by the uh, value of this fixed size cell and find our data. Of course, in the end, we have some unused data in the page, but as long as we're keeping writing new data to this page, this unused data goes away. But let's remember what we have in strings. We had a size of those. What if we want to change the size of those strings? For example, we don't know the size of the user input. So this comes to a variable size data. And for that, we need a separate solution. Storing the data with a variable size means that we will have some unused space. And this is not an optimal storage, right? Because we will lose on the disk space. With variable size data, we want to store the variable data with minimum overhead. Even with that approach, we won't be able to get rid of uh, any unused space. So instead of avoiding that, we want to mitigate this problem. How do we do that? We reclaim the unused space, so we restructure the page so that there is no unused space or that it is used more efficiently. And this leads us to a structure called slotted page. The slotted page, uh, as well as a fixed size page, starts with a header, which length we know. And then instead of keys or values, we have the array of pointers to some particular places in the file where the data is stored. Those pointers lead us to the places in the file where the actual data is located. Those places are called slots, that's the name of the page. So basically in the process of writing the data, we just create a new pointer which leads to the unused space in the page, write the data there and save up the reference in the array of pointers. This way we receive a very efficient structure that uh, can handle the unused space. So how this structure helps in particular? So first of all, the overhead is minimal because we have references. We don't have like a lot of unused space, but we rather know where the data is located. Uh, the page itself can be defragmented. So we can reorganize the slots and just rewrite the pointers so that the data is compacted and occupies less space. And of course, slots themselves are referenced by IDs, so it doesn't require any re rewriting after the defragmentation. Nice, so we found out how our file looks like, how our page looks like. Now we need to understand what is written inside the cell itself. Here you can see how the two types of cells look like. So first one is a key cell. There are no values whatsoever. Instead, there's a key and of course there's a key size, uh, uh, the page ID that the key belongs to and the bytes of that particular key. And below we have the cell which consists uh, of both key and value. So here as well, we need to understand the key size. We also need to know what's the value size and then we can attach the bytes of the key and bytes of the data. The last question we have in this chapter is how those cells are organized inside the page. Let's take a look at this picture. So here we have a header of the cell and at the end we have the actual cells. So right after the header we have the offset, so this array of pointers that point out to the cells that uh, we are writing to the end of the page. Every new cell gets to the empty space, so the cells grow from the end of the page upwards to the, its beginning. However, we're not only adding the data to the page, we can remove it as well. And then we face the problem of managing the empty space. Here you see the situation when we removed some cells of variable data size and thus we have some empty spaces. First of all, what the page comes up with is the availability list. This is the list of pointers where we have empty spaces. Uh, when a new write happens, the database decides if this empty space is enough to store a new record and if it is, it fills it in. 
when if it's not, then the defragmentation is required. The headers and trailers of the files also contain such additional information as checksums, the versions, and so on. This metadata is required because uh, the version of the database can change. We need to verify that the data was not tampered with, but this is just the metadata. Basically, today we discovered how the database stores uh, the data in the files, what the file consists of, what are the sales pages, and what is the cell structure. Leave a like if you really enjoyed the content, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to and hit those bells to receive the notification about the new videos. Thank you very much, and see you soon.